Hey, and welcome to Kevin's Coding Bytes, episode three. Today, we're talking about push notifications. We're going to use mobile services on Cloud Foundry for push, uh, sending push notifications and setting up the APNS server. And we're also going to use the keychain to create a certificate uh, authority request and use the developer.apple.com website to actually um, get a certificate created and signed by Apple. Have fun. We start in the SAP Cloud Platform Mobile Services trial instance of ours. And in here, I've created an app already called Push Notification App. And this app is missing the push notification feature. So we got to go into features. And in here, you'll find mo mobile push notification. And then we can say add to application. And we choose our application and say OK. And this takes a second and it assigns that mobile push notification feature to your application configuration. And then in here, you can later on configure your APNS endpoint. But for now, we just enable detailed event log and we say save. Next would be generating the app. So we go into the assistant and we can say reuse existing application. We choose our mobile services account, choose our application and we say next. And here we say push, no, push notifications. And we save that to balance. And then we can just say simply finish. And it will and it will generate our application now with all the push notification code in there because we already assigned that feature to mobile services and the assistant fetches all the information for mobile services and that's the reason why it knows it needs to add push notifications to it and we can see that we have the push notifications entitlement in here and if we click on the project file we can actually see the uh, signing and capabilities tab we should uh, um, see under capability that we have here push notifications and uh, they're already added here. So that's pretty cool. Uh, for now, what we got to do is we got to build this one time. And if we build that one time and we set up everything correctly in here with signing and your account, we should actually get this application definition also created on the Apple developer website. So let's build that one time. And while this is building, we go to the Apple developer website. And in here you can sign in with your account and then under certificates, identifies and profiles, you can go to identifiers and you can see our new app added here, push notifications. So we can go in here and we should see that push notifications is already configured. Not configured, but added. So we've got to configure it. And we want to create the development SSL certificate. So we say create certificate. We can choose iOS or macOS as a platform. We've got to choose our certificate signing request and say continue. So what happened now is that Apple took that signing, uh, certificate signing request file and uh, got it signed by the, or actually created a certificate out of it and got this certificate signed by the Apple Worldwide Developer Relations Certification Authority. And uh, with that, we can set up our APNS server on mobile services. But for now, we download that and we got to do a little bit more uh, to that certificate, or we got to do a little bit with that certificate to actually make it possible to, to upload it on mobile services. Because mobile services, if we go back in here, mobile services uh, um, wants a P12 file. And uh, a P12 file is basically, um, it stands for personal information exchange, but it's basically that certificate install certificate file with its private key encrypted in one file. And then we can upload that and we got to give it a password here later on. So we let's do that. 
let's go into Finder. Let's see where my Finder is. There you go. And then say Downloads. And then we have our certificate here. And we're going to install that. And it should be installed in our keychain now. And uh, here we can see the certificate um, being ins installed in our keychain. And what we're going to do now is we're going to basically take that and say, export those items as a certificates.p12 file. And we'll just say safe. And now it asks us for a password. And then our Mac wants access to. All right. With that, we have our certificates P12 file, and uh, we can set up mobile services accordingly. So let's do that. Um, we have that open already, and we chose Sandbox. Of course, if you go productive, you want to choose production, but then you need a different, you need a production certificate from Apple. So we say sandbox certificate, and then we can browse for that P12 file. And it wants, yeah, thank you, no. And it wants our password. And then from here, we can just simply say save. And that's all you gotta configure in mobile services here. So now, one last thing I forgot is actually the service keys. And here we want to add a new service key and we call that uh, push notification and we choose some roles. So what we want is uh, multiple, and you, if you hover over, I think it tells you what it is. Yep, send push messages to multiple users with a single request. And uh, I don't know, push registrations read. Theoretically, you could add all of them. Um, or just go over them and see what, what you want or what you need, depending on um, depending on your needs. So we say, okay, and uh, we got those service keys created here. And now what we got to do is we just got to run that app and see if it registers with mobile services. All right, I have to have <clears throat> app deployed on my real phone because I want to uh, receive the push notifications on there. And I have QuickTime open here so you can see my phone being displayed. So it asks us if we want to receive push notifications and of course we want that. So we say allow. And uh, in here, it's just like a standard app as you know it. Um, but what, what's really interesting is did we get that device registration? So let's see. Yep, there you go. A new device got registered. And now we can send push notifications onto that device. So let's go in here and say push notification app. And then we say mobile push notification. And in here we can say push registrations and we see my device showing up here. And now we can send a push notification. So we can say send push notification. And in the advanced tab, you get actually the JSON file of that push notification. So you can, if you follow the guidelines, um, and I will link the guideline down in the description, um, you can manipulate that push notification as you wish. But for now, we just make it simple. And uh, we say, hi, this is my first push notification. Notification. And uh, let's bring back QuickTime. Uh, let's make that smaller a little bit. Here we go. Let's say send. And sending the push notification. Boop, boop. And we see, hi, this is my first push notification. And we got that in here. Yeah. That's that's how you send push notifications with mobile services. Um, but last step is to actually understand what's going on um, in the code in the app. Like, why can my app receive push notifications? Like, what is happening here? So let's open up the, um, let me think, let's open up the app delegate. So the assistant generates uh, the push notification code into the app delegate. So in here, 
we can see, bop, bop, bop. let's see, initialize and onboarding. Um, here, remote notification handling. Uh, you have like a quick link here to the remote notification framework. But basically what it does is it calls initialize remote notification. This gets <clears throat> a, a UI application shared instance and says register for remote notifications. Then we get a you end user notification center. And then we request authorization for um, this device here. And uh, you can you can actually, as it says here, enable or disable features based on authorization. And we register ourselves as a delegate. Next would be upload the device token for uh, for remote notification because mobile services needs your registered device so it knows who you are and where to send the notification to. So we retrieve uh, an onboarding session. Uh, we get our remote notification parameters with the help of this this key here. And then we can just say register device token for that device token with our defined parameters from here. We handle our errors and that's it. Um, then we have a couple of delegate methods which get called every time the register, uh, device registration for remote notification with device token um, happened. So we call in here upload device token for remote notification and the registration succeeded. Uh, when it failed, we just log it out here. Um, of course, we want to do something more meaningful. Um, then uh, <clears throat> for the user notification center, as it says, call to let your app know which action was selected by the user for a given, no no given notification. So this is for you if you want to um, react to user interaction with your notification, like jump to a different screen or open a workflow or like things like that. And um, as last, we have this will present notification. And this gets called when a notification is delivered to a foreground app. Um, and then you can handle different things in here if you want to. And that's basically it. It's like, it's not a lot of code here. Um, and it's it's fairly, fairly simple because mobile services takes a lot of work away from us as well as the assistant because it generates us the code and the uh, setup on mobile services is fairly easy. Um, the only thing you got to figure out is this um, certificate part. Um, but if you're interested in the whole process and want to do it yourself, please remember you need a development account with Apple so you can create that certificate. And there is a tutorial on the developers.sap.com website. And I'm going to put the link in the description below. Thank you for watching and see you next time.